Welcome and uh, thank you all for joining us in the Measure M Parks for All Community Meeting. Uh, tonight's meeting will focus on parks, facilities, and amenities in the uh, northwest, uh, northwest, northwest quadrant of Santa Rosa. Um, gracias por acompañarnos. Muy bienvenidos a, a todos um, uh, por acompañarnos en, es, en esta reunión de, me, de Measure M, uh, Parques para Todos. Uh, esta reunión se, se enfo, um, dará enfoque a toda la, to, to, uh, todas las um, este, comodidades y instalaciones que ofrece uh, la ciudad de Santa Rosa en, en los parques uh, en, en el cuadrante del sur, uh, sureste del, de la ciudad, del suroeste de la ciudad. Uh, comenzaremos a las 5 y media, a las 5, uh, 5.35. Uh, para esperar que otras personas se unan a nosotros. Uh, we'll begin uh, at 5.35, uh, just to let other folks kind of join us as well.
Okay, so I think uh, it's a good time to actually start the meeting. Um, nada más les quiero avisar a todas las personas que um, quizás necesitan interpretación. Uh, si, uh, si pueden ir hacia abajo, hay unos iconos en los que pueden, uh, quizás este, uh, si es que necesitan interpretación, pueden ir. Uh, la, el diagrama aquí explica cómo pueden um, uh, activar la función de interpretación también. So si, uh, si, es que, uh, si es que necesitan, um, si es que necesitan ayuda, pueden mandarnos un, un, uh, un mensaje a través del chat también. Uh, este, todo, toda la reunión será, uh, uh, va a ser interpretada a, a través de este sistema uh, de interpretación. So si, quiere, si necesitan interpretación en español, pueden ir al icono aquí que les indica este, este diagrama um, que está ahorita en pantalla. Um, so just uh, for uh, those, uh, we just translated for those or interpreted for those who need um, Spanish translation. Spanish translation is actually uh, being provided by Pablo and Charles uh, with the International Effect, uh, Effectiveness Center. Uh, the live interpretation can be heard uh, in Spanish. I just indicated that uh, to uh, some of the participants as well. Uh, if you have any questions as well on that and uh, you're maybe assisting other folks uh, as well with that, you can also um, uh, let us know uh, as well. Um, so I just, I'm gonna hand it over to, to Jen uh, that will, uh, that will lead, lead us in the meeting as well. Jen. Thank you, Omar. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director for, for Parks. And uh, let's go ahead and roll into the next slide. There you go. <laughs> and I will turn it back over to Omar to introduce us and get us started with the Measure M presentation tonight. Yeah, so thanks. Um, my, you know, my name is Omar Gallardo. I'm the, uh, I'm the new audiences manager for Land Paths. Um, and uh, I'll be, uh, you know, provide, usually what we would do is we would uh, offer, um, you know, uh, offer us to gather, you know, ideally under the walnut tree at Bayer Farm uh, and uh, kind of gather and uh, maybe share, share food or whatnot, share laughs. Um, and uh, obviously that is not possible. So we're doing this in in this way, and uh, thank you, Jen, and uh, the city for actually offering us to participate in this, um, you know, and uh, and and to uh, provide, you know, uh, provide our assistance in actually getting folks, uh, you know, to actually provide feedback uh, and to these recommendations that will be happening, uh, and we'll be going to the to the to the city council as well. Um, land, uh, if you all don't know, land pass is uh, if you're not acquainted with land pass, we've been involved almost 15 years now uh, with the city of Santa Rosa and partnering up. Uh, with the uh, Bayer Farm project uh, in, in, in Roseland. Um, and um, there are a lot of, you know, we have three initiatives mainly. Um, we, have, we, we have an initiative that's, that works with youth, getting youth connected to uh, a lot of the open spaces and, and nature around us live in a beautiful place. And so we try to connect youth, families through our initiative, through the new audience initiative. And also we ask everybody to participate and help us out. And, uh, you know, uh, on the different preserves that we have, the different programs that we might have volunteering out there and so you know through the community care initiative as well so all these initiatives are meant to uh, reach out to you and uh, and help us help us um, you know uh, take action in taking care of uh, you know land that that you know land that's all around us some beautiful places that we have uh, and that we actually take responsibility to care for them and I think one of the one of the um, projects that actually sees that happening is uh, is is the Bayer Farm project that we've partnered up with the city of Santa Rosa, uh, Rec and Park, um, in, in providing that space here in Roseland. And so um, that's a little bit about us. Um, you know, um, I'll provide my information for anybody who actually has any questions, you know, even uh, possibly during the meeting, but also uh, definitely after the meeting, we can all always, uh, you can always uh, get a hold of me. And so that information will be provided out there as well. So thank you, John. Thanks so much, Omar. I really appreciate it. And I just, uh, I wanted to back up. I forgot to do a little bit of housekeeping here and, and introduce the other folks with us tonight. Um, so while you can see Omar and I um, during the presentation tonight, there's uh, a bunch of folks working behind the scenes to help us out. And I wanted to introduce our hosts, um, Steve Brown, Emily Ander, and Mary Lou Nichols from the city who are helping us behind the scenes, managing uh, questions and answers. Um, assisting and taking notes during the meeting. And I've got a little bit of information for us before we get um, too far into the meeting. Um, as members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone will be muted and your camera will be off. 
Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. And please know the city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. And I'm gonna turn it over to host Emily Ander to explain how you can participate um, in the meetings tonight and how you uh, will be heard. Thank you, Jen. If you are calling in from a telephone and choose to speak during the public question and answer portion of today's meeting, for privacy concerns, host Nichols will rename your viewable phone number to caller with the last four digits of your phone number. At the end of the second poll, Jen will open the floor for questions and answers and public comments. Host Nichols will be lowering all raised hands until the question and answer portion of the meeting is open. Once Jen has called for public questions or comments, the host will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to ask a question or comment related to the presentation. If you are calling in to listen to the meeting by phone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on the public one by one to have their Zoom hands raised. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment. A courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond to your question. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response that you receive. There is also the opportunity, opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom toolbar and typing in your question. The host will monitor these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows, or will ask the presenters to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not answered during the presentation will be addressed during the questions and public comment periods, period during the presentation. We ask those listening on the Spanish channel, but wishing to make a public comment or ask a question to turn off and leave interpretation entirely at the time you hear your name called. So you join the main channel to make your comment heard and translated into English. Um, the globe icon will now look like a circle with the letters ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish and to hear um, the response to your question. Thank you, Jen. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Omar. Yeah, and I just uh, want to, you know, again, uh, th thank everybody for uh, for joining us today. Um, and I think one of the main things that actually really um, 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 you know I think motivated me, but also um, you know other folks that that you know that we that we engage with in, in, in the Southwest Santa Rosa is that, um, I mean, we all pay, we all pay into this, into some of the funds that we'll be discussing today. Uh, you buy, you know, you buy something, whether, you know, throughout the city. And so we all should have this, this opportunity to, to provide this, this, uh, you know, this input into the city uh, that, you know, eventually moves on. And uh, also uh, I would like to encourage everybody to follow, follow those suggestions, follow those suggestions through um, and, you know, um, again, that's what I'm, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're eager to put our, our information out there and, and help out along the way. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to actually participate uh, and, uh, you know, whatever we can do to actually, um, you know, see that, that input along the way, all the way to the city council uh, and, um, you know, and, 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 and participate, you know, be active in, in that process. And so this is a great way to actually do that. And that's, I think, why we were motivated to actually follow through uh, and uh, and and host, you know, even if it is through this tough um, medium. But um, nonetheless, it, it's um, uh, it needs to be done. And so, uh, thank you again, Jen, uh, and you know, for this opportunity. And uh, hopefully, we can help out. Uh, you know, follow this through. Thank you. Thanks, Omar. I really appreciate that. And I just wanted to thank um, Land Pass. They've been a fantastic partner. Um, if you don't know anything about them, certainly uh, check them out, check their website out. They, um, the last photo we had up was a picture of what amazing work they do at Bear Farm. Uh, they provide that opportunity for youth to have education around uh, community gardening and uh, just, just 
um, lots of really good summer programs and I uh, don't have a, a view of the garden here tonight, but it's it's beautiful. They've done an amazing job. They're extremely dedicated <laughs> to uh, to to working out there and to connecting with the with our community and with youth. So we're really happy to partner with them. Um, this this partnership is is beyond just this evening and help and uh, helping us with the presentation, but also helping us uh, go through the data that we collect and um, helping us to work together to bring these um, bring this information towards council and the board of community services as we move forward. Uh, and then before we get started, I also wanted to point out the website at the at near the bottom uh, below. Uh, the Parks Deputy Director, srcity.org slash parks for all. If you want to know anything about Measure M, you can go to this website. There's tons of information there. Everything you ever wanted to know about Measure M um, is there. And the survey that you'll be taking as we participate tonight is also there as well. Uh, so let's roll to the next slide. And while we're doing that, I also wanted to let you know, you do have some of your, you have um, Vice Mayor Natalie Rogers with us tonight, I believe, as well as the um, council appointed uh, Board of Community Services Chair, Carol Quant and Board, uh, Board of Community Services member, Terry Griffin. And I apologize if I missed anybody else, but um, those are the folks I can see. So you are represented here. So what we're going to be doing tonight is talking about what is Measure M and, and what can we do with it. Uh, we're going to go over the overview. We'll look at citywide parks. What do we have citywide? If, if we're asking you to make decisions about what you think is important to you, we want to tell you what's out there to remind you. And then we're going to be focusing tonight on the Southwest Quadrant Parks and Amenities. Just to remind you for the Southwest what's out there too. Um, and if you're joining us uh, from another part of the city, you are more than welcome. Uh, it, is, it is a little bit targeted towards the Southwest, but everybody is encouraged and we're happy to have you here. The survey is the same, no matter what part of the city you live in. Uh, we'll talk about the Measure M priorities, what we can and can't do with this, with this funding. And then we'll look at what we're gonna do next after these meetings. And then just another reminder, <laughs> that website, srcity.org, parks for all. Uh, be sure to check that out if you would rather take the survey there or if you have neighbors or friends that um, need to take that survey. Let's go to the next slide. So if we look at uh, the, big, the big picture, essentially, as Omar said, it's a tax measure. And so when you're buying things, um, in the city, there's a tax that's collected on everything that you're purchasing and it goes into this tax. And it's collected an eight cents sales tax for the next 10 years, well, we've got eight years left. Uh, and it essentially pri provides approximately $1.9 million annually to the city of Santa Rosa to use for anything recreation and parks related, pretty much. Um, it's, est it's an estimate, 1.9 million is an estimate. It's all based on the economy and how well um, the tax measure is doing. So um, it, is, it is doing as well as it has been estimated over the last two years, so that's great. Um, we have almost a little, I think just a little bit over $4 million available now. Um, there is a baseline commitment, which I'll explain in a minute, as well as a fiscal oversight committee um, appointed, and these are appointees that look at what the city and other agencies throughout the county are deciding to spend their funds on and making sure it meets the requirements of the tax measure. And the baseline commitment is essentially, um, we, um, we can pay for, we can't um, take away what we're already paying for right now and, and supplant that but we can supplement. So if we want more staff, we want more amenities, we want more parks, we want better parks, we can do that with this fund. Um, but you can't take away what we're already doing and use this funds to pay for that, if that makes sense. And I, you know, hopefully if, if, you, if that's not clear, we can help explain it a little bit better when we have Q&A later on in the, in the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a bit of a time frame to say what we've been doing, what we're doing now, and what we plan to do in the future. Uh, so what we did do 
in the first couple of years is we went to council and developed a uh, essentially a two slash three year plan on how we could move forward with this. And what council approved was to spend the first two years of funding we receive as part of this tax measure to recover fire damaged parks and landscapes and also uh, fund a condition assessment of the parks um, system. So what sort of condition do we have out there? Do we need to replace certain parks uh, equipment faster than the other? So uh, we're looking at that. Uh, we just started that um, last month. So we're hoping to finish that up later this fall. And then also they approved what we're doing tonight, citywide community outreach. Um, all of this got started and then the pandemic happened. <laughs> so it got, it got a little bit stalled because we had to get back up to gear and understand how to work with the community again. Um, but this is the third of four meetings. We have another meeting next week for the Southeast community. So if for, for any reason you can't finish tonight, you can always attend that meeting as well. Um, so we're collecting citywide community input on what your priorities are. How would you like to see the city spend the funds we're getting? And so that's what we're doing tonight. And then uh, what we plan to do with all that information is return to the council appointed board of community services, BOCS and city council to provide another update to the plan of what we should do with this funding. We don't know what that's gonna be yet, but we plan to return this year to council with that information. We're also going to return to council once we have our condition assessment completed. Um, that will tell us where our priorities lie with things that need to be replaced. So you might have seen some playgrounds that need need to be replaced. They're aging, and so uh, we're going to be going through that uh, with council as well. And then we will also um, the board of community services will make a recommendation to council, and we'll be bringing this to council as part of the budget process. And then uh, this is by no means the end of the conversation. Uh, it, it's such a big topic. What do you want us to spend your money on? Uh, we really think that there's probably going to be quite a bit of continued and ongoing community engagement um, even after we go to council this year, because there's just so much to think about and talk about. So we'll be back out engaging with the community again. Uh, there might be some groups of folks that we're missing. One of the things that we've been able to see so far is we're hitting an age group that is 65 and older. So we're missing a lot of uh, younger age groups. So we might think, well, maybe we should reach out to our school districts or other targeted groups that, so we can get a good, well-rounded um, input from a lot of different folks in the city. Um, so this is an ongoing conversation. It, it won't end until year 10 <laughs> when the tax measure ends. And right now we're rolling into year three at July 1st. Um, next slide, please. So here is, um, here is the tax measure in plain language. So what we did was we took the um, line items of allowable uses, allowable things you can spend the money with and highlighted the things that are really important. So if we look at it, this, the measure specifically allows us to maintain something so we can add to our, what we're doing for maintenance. We can improve something or develop new parks. We can create something new, uh, create a new park, expand what we already have. We can plan, we can strategize and develop new things. We can provide additional programming and, and think about how we wanna do that we can use the funds to re, uh, reduce fire risk and we can improve trails, waterways and repairing areas. So that's not the entire sentence that you're seeing there, but we wanted to give you some highlights here. And in the next few slides, we'll specifically show you exactly what's allowed uh, in for the tax measure. So you can start thinking about that and get ready for our polling coming up. Next slide, please. So when we think of maintenance, we wanted to show you some visual items here. I'm a visual person. It's kind of nice to see what do you mean by maintenance? Because um, there's a lot of different things that um, can be done for maintenance to keep things safe and clean and accessible. Um, anything in that language that's written here that says maintain parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experience um, can be, funds can be used towards this item. 
And so here's some examples of that. You know, we've got graffiti and down trees and some open space, um, Howarth Memorial Park open space area maintenance. Next slide. And so here's, here's the, another thing that we can use the funds on, improve and develop athletic fields, playgrounds, restrooms, picnic areas, and visitor amenities. And so here's some visuals to help you um, on things, you know, the upper, a place to play community park. We uh, updated that not too long ago with some new equipment um, and some turf areas. It can be updated as well as um, baseball fields and athletic areas. Next slide. And so here is another allowable use, create, create and expand parks, trails, bikeways, public art, and recreational and historic, historical facilities. These are all things that encompass uh, parks in the city. And so here's just some basic examples of things we think of when we think of uh, bikeways and trails and public art. Next slide. And so here's another allowable use to plan, develop bike paths and trails with connections to schools, community spaces, and regional trails. And so here you've got a couple examples of what we mean by, you know, trails and pathways. Um, Rinconada Trail Park down at the bottom that connects directly to uh, the neighboring school. Next slide, please. And another allowable use is to provide recreation, education, and health programs for the community. So if you, if your um, children or relatives or friends have been part of programming in, in the city for our recreation programming, uh, we, I think the city does a really great job with providing access for youth to programming. But uh, if there's a program you've ever been thinking of, we should expand or do something different with, uh, this is that opportunity. Next slide. And another allowable use is to decrease future fire, fire risks, <laughs> fuel loads, and invasive plants on city-owned open space parks. So um, even though you, know, you might be looking at um, Southwest Community Park, for example, um, there are a few untouched areas of the park. Those would be open areas. Um, and certainly Roseland, with Roseland Community Park, there hasn't been any development there. So, um, that's what we mean by removing invasive species or reducing fire risk. Right now, the city does do an annual mowing to reduce weeds for fire use. Is there something more we should be doing or can be doing? Next slide. And another allowable use is to improve the trails along waterways and riparian areas to benefit fish, wildlife, habitat, and water quality. Um, so we've, we've put some examples in there by what we mean we have um, lakes in the city that we maintain and we have creeks is a riparian area so if you look at that picture of the of the person at the creek all the way up to that fence that would be considered the riparian area anything that's in that creek bed right there would be considered riparian um, and then um, that's a picture also of the santa rosa uh, creek trail up there at the at the railing so there's we, we've got all the things considered right there in that one photo <laughs> All right, so let's look at, so the other thing we wanted to do um, tonight was, um, since we're asking you to help us prioritize and tell us what you think is important for us to spend the funds on, we thought it'd be important for you to understand where we get funds right now. And so if we're looking at developing a park project, a new, a new project, so Bear Park was recently, or in the last few years, completed anyway. And uh, the funding sources we use there are park development impact fees. We'll explain that a little bit more um, coming up, but we have park development impact fees that we can use to create new parks and develop parks. Occasionally the general fund can be used for park projects if it's citywide or if there's some larger initiative that the park is brought part of. And um, we always apply for at least two or three grants a year and we do that because um, certainly we don't have enough funding in the park development impact fees to do everything we want to do at the city. So when we look at granting opportunities, we can combine the funds we already have with the granting funds and do something bigger and better. Uh, if you're ever been in a recreation program at the city, those are funded through the general fund. 
we also have neighborhood services, which you all might be familiar with after school programming. Um, the city has a pretty robust after school program. Those are funded with measure O funds for neighborhood services. Uh, but everything else in the recreation team is funded through the general fund. Um, if you see maintenance folks out there, um, they're funded through the general fund as, as well. And then there's an area of funding that happens uh, in between projects and in between maintenance. Um, and there's no specific funding source for those. Um, we, we look to see how we can fund those projects where we have something that's a little bit larger than a project, um, but not a huge thing, and a, or a little bit larger than a maintenance project, but not such a huge thing that we couldn't do it um, with the staff we have. And so there, there is um, a space there where it's a little difficult when we get higher costing um, repairs. Um, we make it work, but that is a place where we are a little bit deficient. Um, and the other thing I wanted to cover on this too is we think about as a reminder how much funding we're anticipated to get every year from this tax measure is 1.9 million. Mm -hmm. And if you think about how far those funds can go, um, just as an example, uh, we are replacing the playground equipment at Colgan Creek uh, Park coming up pretty soon this year. And the estimate we have is $291,000 for that uh, replacement of that playground. And uh, for those of you that remember, Coffee Park did um, burn in the 2017 fires and replacement of that, uh, of those features that burned uh, was a, a, about uh, four and a half million dollars. So just give you some sort of a sense of, of, of what things cost out there. And, and right now, if you look at a cost for um, other services, they really vary depending on whether it's staff or contracted landscape. So there's, there's a lot of information there. I'll stop and we'll move on, but um, certainly if there's questions, we can, we can come back to that. Next slide. So um, just a reminder, we're looking at the Southwest Quadrant and I've gotten a lot of questions. What do you mean by quadrant? So uh, what we mean is it's just, a, it's just a word we use to describe the Southwest area of Santa Rosa. And you can think of Santa Rosa as being in four sections. When you look at the intersection of Highway 101, which runs the black line that runs down the center of the screen here in the map, and Highway 12, which runs west to east or east to west, however you want, across your screen. So then you can see essentially there's four areas that are uh, developed when you, when you look at the map this way. And we call them quadrants. It's just a name. Um, but we also collect park development impact fees. That's how we get funds to, to do new playgrounds and new parks. Uh, we collect those fees per quadrant. So for instance, um, if there's new development happening in the Southwest Quadrant, a new residential development, the developer can choose to either provide park land or provide in lieu fees. And I'm really simplifying it, but that's that's generally the way it happens. And the city collects those fees if the developer chooses not to um, develop parkland. And uh, we use those fees to develop new parks and repair and update existing parks uh, to bring them into compliance. And so this, this is how those are thought of, uh, this is how those fees are collected. And if they're collected in this quadrant, they stay in the quadrant. However, you can combine and pool funds from across the city for a citywide benefit, something that is only offered in one location in the city. So that's, that's something we can do there. Um, the other thing is, if you take a look at this map, uh, one of the things we like to know uh, about what's going on in our community is, is where you live. And we're going to take a poll next after this, a really easy one. But if you take a look at this map, if you're living in the southwest of Santa Rosa, you're in quadrant two or southwest. Uh, but we're going to ask you to tell us which area of the city you li live in, northwest, southwest, northeast, southeast, one, two, three, or four, either, either way. Do your best. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not rocket science. We just want to make sure we have a general idea of where, where you're living that helps us understand. Um, so let's, let's go into the next slide and start our polling. Uh, this is a really easy poll where we're just asking you um, 
where you live and age group and all of that stuff. So I'm going to turn it back over to our host to describe how to participate. Thank you, Jen. All of the poll questions, there are a total of four in this poll, are single or multiple choice. You must answer all the questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, before the th third, etc. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll will be or is on the project website, um, and so you can go there after the meeting. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Jen will walk you through the results. I'm gonna bring up the poll now. Okay, so go ahead, you can go ahead and start clicking in the poll and be sure to um, use the um, control on the side to scroll down and go ahead and complete the poll for um, relatively easy questions, but they really help us with understanding um, who's, who's participating tonight. So I'll check back when our, with our host. How are we doing with participation? We have 81% reporting. So we're waiting for about seven more people. Great. Uh, can I just, I, I'm, I'm really excited about all the, all the youth that's here. So I just want to throw that in there because I'm pretty excited about that. It's great. That is exciting. That's great. Looking forward to the results. We are at 90%, 89%. Thank you. The number appears to be um, stagnant. All right, let's go ahead and look at the results. So this is kind of fun because you get to see you get to see it live. Um, so uh, where do you live within the city of Santa Rosa? Uh, it looks like most of the folks participating tonight are from the southwest of the city. So that's great. And then what is your age group? Under 18, wow, that's a first for us. Um, you're right, Omar, this is great. <laughs> so 48% under 18, and then we've got 18%, 35 to 44, 
and uh, kind of a mix of the other age groups, which is which is great. Um, that's really unique for, for us at the city. So thank you for participating. Um, number three, how often do you visit a city of Santa Rosa park or recreation facility? And the we've got 45% attending at least once a week. And number four, how did you hear about tonight's meeting? Most was, it looks like word of mouth or some other option. Okay, great. So I'm glad, hopefully that gives you a sense of how to participate um, in, in, in Zoom to give us your information. And we'll go ahead and get started with the rest of the presentation. Then we have one more larger poll where we do ask you for uh, to provide us with your feedback on your priorities for the for the tax measure. And so uh, for this for this map, we were essentially looking for um, we're looking at a general plan map. So this map is a little old. It's uh, and so we do have um, in this map shown in green existing parks. This map does include state parks and the county parks as well, but it gives you a sense if you compare the green to the white of, of where the parks are as much as you can. And then the little red trees are proposed parks that um, we need to build. And so um, you can kind of see visually what's happening here with um, how the city has developed and where most of the trees are. Most of the trees are in the Southwest, which is where we need to uh, spend most of our time developing parks. Thank you to the host for zooming in. It is really difficult to see when you're looking so far out, but um, this will give you a good sense. You can see the Southwest there and how many trees there are. Um, and that just means we need, we need to build more parks. And this part of the city was formerly in the county. So it is, it is natural that we are starting and needing to build more city parks in this area. Let's go ahead and look at the next slide. And so um, that was a, a visual. This is parks by the number. And again, this is citywide. This is not just for Southwest. This is, this is citywide. And so if you look down at the total, we have 108 uh, different types of parks in the city throughout the entire city. And then uh, 1,032 acres uh, for all the different parks types we have. And a lot of people ask, what is a special use park? Um, a special, special use parks are Luther Burbank Home and Gardens, uh, the Rural Cemetery, uh, Sonoma County Museum is actually a park <laughs> inside there, and the golf course as well. And, uh, and public gathering areas, um, obviously that's the Courthouse Square, et cetera. So just, just for reference here. So this is what we've got citywide. And let's take a look at the next slide and we'll zoom into the Southwest. Um, so here you can kind of see we've zoomed in a little bit here of the map of the Southwest and, and what's there. And um, we've identified the two community parks, Roseland and, and Southwest in this area. Um, there's a little tree shown there because again, this is an older map from the general plan. We do have the land at Roseland now. It's not developed yet. Uh, we're working on that. And of course, Southwest Community Park is, is already there. So this gives you a good, a good general picture of, of, of what's happening. And we can look at things um, in a different way on the next slide. And, and as far as a list, this kind of gives you a good sense of what is, what is in the Southwest. Just as a reminder, I kind of feel like if someone's gonna ask me questions, I would want a reminder of what, what is out there. And so um, I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven existing parks. And then we've got two um, open space or um, airfield. It's an open space mitigation site if you drive by it. So it's, it's a protected site for a protected species. And we have Meadow Neighborhood Park, which is a future park. We own the land. Um, it's not developed as part of, it's part of a development that's coming in the future. So we need, we only have a little sliver. We need to collect the rest of the parkland and actually have a road to it so that we can develop it. Um, but essentially two community parks and, um, and, and seven parks that are developed, seven neighborhood parks. And the difference between the community park and the neighborhood park 
is essentially size. So the community park is 20 acres or more. It has a lot of extra activities. We expect that somebody would need to drive to a community park potentially that we're serving people that are living more than a mile away with community parks. And with neighborhood parks, the anticipation is that you can get there without a vehicle potentially. Um, Bear Park happens to have is, is a neighborhood park. It happens to have a really tiny parking lot for those, those who need to use it. Um, but generally it's, the, it's a size difference and there's usually less activity in a neighborhood park and more activity in a community park, but that is not always necessary. <laughs> you know, if you look at Bear Park, there's a lot going on there and it's still a neighborhood park. So next slide, please. So if you look at the um, types of parks we have um, and remember how many um, parks we have, 108 parks citywide and over a thousand acres. In the Southwest by itself, we have 13 parks and 71 acres. So that's really reflecting the need for development of new parks in the, in the Southwest quadrant. And uh, we went over those parks. So we've got two community parks and nine um, neighborhood parks. Next slide. The other thing we wanna talk about tonight is what do we mean when we say amenity? And an amenity can be any of the things listed here. So playground, skate park, soccer field, fitness equipment, uh, restrooms, dog parks, barbecue grills, basketball courts, um, anything that you can see in a park, it's there, it's, it's an amenity. So that's what we mean when we ask you questions and say amenity or feet park feature or park element. Um, this is what we mean. And so it's kind of interesting to look at this uh, in the Southwest quadrant. We have eight, eight playgrounds and eight large grassy areas and um, questionable. It's, it's a little bit questionable that we have only eight picnic tables. <laughs> I think that's probably just what is documented in our database. I think there's probably quite a few more picnic tables in the Southwest um, area, but we also have our community garden is listed there at um, that land paths operates on behalf of the community at Bear Park. So let's, uh, let's see, let's go into our next slide. So, so before, before we get started on this poll, um, I, I'm not going to walk through each, um, each questions, um, each of the questions. So we'll, it will be a little bit silent for a while. There's 10 questions coming up. It's a lot, uh, but this is your opportunity. This is your time to tell us what you want. And so really pay attention to question number 10. It goes back to those 10 are those things that are allowable in the parks measure. And we want you to pick about three of them there that you really want to prioritize. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the polling and I'll turn it over to our host to describe how to participate again, just in case you need it. Thank you, Jen. Um, again, all the poll questions are single or multiple choice. You must answer all of the questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll and you may, may need to scroll down to the bottom to find it. Um, either to the bottom of your screen or using that little gray bar um, on the side. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question. Um, if you're participating via landline, um, you will not be able to participate during the poll, but you can go to the Parks for All website and participate in the survey. Um, and once everyone has completed the poll, Jen will walk through the question and the answer. Okay, so just a reminder, go ahead and get started and uh, don't forget to scroll down. Solo para recordarles, vamos a empezar. Y no se le olviden bajar hacia abajo para contestar todas las preguntas. And otherwise, we are going to have a little bit of quiet time to let you fill in these questions. And uh, one other reminder, uh, question five and six, it's the same question. We just have a lot of information, so it's broken up into two questions.
And just wanted to check back in with everybody. Go ahead and start the questioning if you have answer your questions on the poll if you haven't already. Um, and scroll through them. Remember, we've got 10 questions here, so we're giving you a bit of time. Um, so, um, and we have a question and answer period coming up uh, not too far from this slide. So go ahead and answer all the questions and, and we'll check back in a little bit and see how everyone's doing. Okay, it looks like we've got quite a few people participating already, which is great. We're just going to go another minute at the most just to make sure everyone gets gets a chance to participate.
So I'm going to check back in with our hosts and see how we're doing with participation and if we need more, a little bit more time or anything. We're at um, 34 of 38 respondents. All right. That's great. Are we holding steady? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. So this is going to be fun. Let's look at the results. All right, these are always really fun to, to go through as a group. It's the benefit of attending in person if you can, but these, um, this is being recorded and it all is also available on our website. Um, so number one, how satisfied are you with the condition of Santa Rosa Parks? And so it looks like not satisfied and satisfied are tied at 35%, mostly satisfied 24%. Let's see, do you feel safe when you visit Santa Rosa Parks? Uh, most of the time, 53%, and the rest of them are a bit split. Uh, sometimes 21% and always 12. Number three, what park features do you use most often? And so let's see, I've got to actually enlarge my polling screen here so I can see it. <laughs> Um, what do we have here? 38% natural areas, open space. And then we've got 18% uh, creeks and lakes and 12% athletic fields. And then a variety of other um, amenities. All right, so number four, what are the most important qualities you want in a park? And let me scroll up. Okay, so we've got 62% are requesting safety as the most important quality. And 56% uh, would appreciate well-maintained. And then 50% natural landscaping. And 35% ease of access with aesthetics, quiet spaces, and themes around 20-something 20 per, 20 percent. Oh, and I missed 38% uh, uh, would like a variety of things um, in parks or a variety of qualities in parks. That's great information. Okay, so this is a two-part question. It's just a lot of information. So uh, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? And so let's see, for this question number five, it was hiking trails, 59%. And let's see the next, uh, the next level, we've got 35% trash and recycling receptacles. And it looks like a, quite a variety of things sharing somewhere between 20 and 30% uh, for the rest, for the remainder of athletic fields, park access, benches, drinking fountains, park pathways, lighting, park areas, and swimming pools. And so the same question, just a different um, number, number six, same question though, which things would you like to see improved? Um, let's see, for this particular question, trees were the most uh, important thing to see uh, improved, as well as it looks like 38% as playgrounds and 32% volleyball courts. And then we've got um, the, the rest is basketball, bike racks, bike trails, public art skate parks, tennis and pickleball courts, sharing between 18 and 30%. And number seven, how often do you have gatherings and events at parks? Of course, this is pre-COVID. <laughs> uh, looks like we've got a lot of a variety there, but it's just edging out uh, that most often gatherings are yearly or annually with 20, the rest of the things at 20%, so weekly, monthly, rarely, around the 20th percentile. 
And number eight, how could your city of Santa Rosa parks and recreation experience be improved? And it looks like we have a tie for better maintained parks and more natural parks, followed up closely by more recreation programs and newer park amenities. And let's see, so question number nine, what city of Santa Rosa recreation programs or activities do you currently participate in or have in the past? And this is another long one, so I'm gonna expand my screen here a little bit. Let's see, so it looks like 50% volunteer opportunities, fantastic. And 29% uh, sport leagues. And it looks like a relatively even split between the rest of them, camps, fitness and wellness classes, aquatics, special interests, um, events and neighborhood services and rental spaces, somewhere between 15 and 20%. And then this is the final, final question, number 10, which is where we were asking you what your priorities would be for spending the Measure M funds. And it looks like there's another tie. <laughs> so the, I'll just read the question. How would you like to see Santa Rosa Measure M Parks for All funding prioritized? And 53% said improving and developing athletic fields, playgrounds, restrooms, picnic areas, and visitor amenities. And another 53% um, improve the trails along waterways and riparian areas to benefit fish, wildlife, habitat, and water quality. And then we've got 50% maintaining parks. That's the one we just went over, right? <laughs> no, that's not the one. So 50%, so there's a lot of, a lot of close answers here. So 50% was maintain parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experiences. And then somewhere between the 40s or the 20s and the 40s were the remainder of the of the items. And that's exciting to see all the results and especially knowing we have a wide variety of folks participating tonight. So I, I appreciate that. I know that it's a really long survey, but it's um, it's great feedback for us uh, as we roll into our next steps. And so let's see. So. Um, just to let you all know, um, we do have another meeting coming up. So if you have neighbors or anybody that would like to attend um, in a virtual meeting, uh, March 25th at 5.30 p.m., again, that same website has the link to um, that meeting, srcity.org parks for all. And the meeting materials from tonight, as well as the survey, if you have neighbors or anybody else that would just like to participate in the survey, all of that is available at srcity.org, Parks for All, the presentation, the, this meeting recording, everything's gonna be available um, until about April 8th. And then we need to start looking at all the information we've collected. So that's the next step in April is collecting all this data and looking at what, what we have um, and seeing what we can, what our next steps would be um, as far as presenting to the Board of Community Services as well as Council. And so um, we'll be doing that. We'll be going to the Board of Community Services next um, with this information as well as City Council as part of the budget process. That's our plan. Um, the other thing we're doing is working with our hosts. So we'll be working with Land Paths and Omar and some of our other meeting hosts from um, the rest of the city. We also have a sports specific group um, to help us make sure when we're looking at the results of what we have um, that um, they're saying what we're saying as well. And so we'll be, we don't know exactly how we're gonna interpret what we see, but we're gonna, it's, it's, we can't wait to look at everything and uh, make a plan for our next, uh, next few years of, of spending for this measure. And so, as I mentioned, this, this conversation, this is definitely just the beginning of the conversation with the community. Uh, we will continue this conversation. And um, certainly even after tonight, if there's lingering questions, we're always all available for that, if you have anything like that. 
Uh, we plan to put up a frequently asked question section, um, an expanded frequently asked question section on the website as well. So maybe if the question you ask might be, uh, there might be other people that want to know the same information. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what we're doing, what we're doing next. And I think our next part of this is question and answer. So hopefully we can hear from some of you if you have specific questions about Measure M or anything we were talking about uh, tonight. Uh, certainly we're available to do our best. <laughs> we don't know everything, but we, we're gonna do our best to answer everything, all the questions. So I will turn it over to our hosts to describe how you can participate in the question and answer tonight. Thank you, Jen. Once Jen calls for pub, now that she's called for public comments and questions, um, host Nichols will ask for you to raise your hand. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by phone, you dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on the public one by one, those who have their Zoom hand raised. The host will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. A courtesy timer of three minutes will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you receive. Great. Okay. Thank you. If you are participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel and Zoom, we have an interpreter on standby on the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to make a public comment, please be sure to pause throughout your comment to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your public comment as required by the Brown Act. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. This icon may look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. So at this point, our interpreters are ready and we can begin. Thank you to our hosts and I will um, look to see who our first to our host to see who our first question is from. Thank you. Our first speaker is Claudia H. Claudia, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Can you see the timer? I can, and I unmuted myself. Very good. Then you may go ahead with your question or comment. Yeah, I live across the street from Southwest Community Park and I use it daily and I'm really appreciative. It's always in good shape and it's a wonderful gathering place. It's quite, uh, to me, it's a representative of a, a great job done by the city. So I'm really pleased. Um, a couple of things about it. One is that I had heard that in the general plan for the park, it was, um, there was a swimming pool originally. So I wanted to ask a question about that and what the city's inclination would be under M measure M. I'd like to advocate for a swimming pool, not a great grand project, but something mid-size um, for the community, especially since there's a lot of housing being developed over by Dutton Meadow and Elsie Allen. And um, I think it would be a great benefit um, and the bus route from Southwest Park to Finley is quite circuitous. It goes down to Bellevue Avenue and then up Stony Point um, from Bellevue from Southwest. So it's kind of like adds an extra probably 15, 20 minutes on it and makes it inconvenient. Um, and then the other is pickleball and tennis because there is a lot of unused land um, and the pickleball is also over at Finley. So it's quite a ways to go. It would be a great amenity for the community. And um, lastly, uh, the gazebo at Southwest Community Park could really use some improvements. It's already standing there, but um, it's, it's quite old and decrepit and not very aesthetically pleasing. 
So um, those, that's sort of my agenda. And then the last is clearly there's a lot of volleyball games and basketball games. That's the most usage other than the soccer field I can see. And those would be great to be improved upon. Um, and the last is the parking lot. And it looks like it's primed for an addition that's a, all dirt lot, but uh, I think that's it. Um, last, oh, I already said last, but I do, I am a member of the Bear Farm just starting this year. So I'm looking forward to it. And the main reason that I joined was because I want to have more cultural interaction um, with the neighborhood and the neighbors. And so cultural inclusion, kind of recreational programs are really important to me and I'd love to see more of that and be willing to volunteer for that. Great, thank you, Claudia, for your for your comment. I really appreciate that. And let's see if I can get to some of your some of your questions. Um, there there has been a discussion about um, keeping the idea of the swimming pool and a recreation center at Southwest Community Park. Um, it's, um, it's an extremely expensive endeavor <laughs> to do something like that. Certainly, if we took every penny from the Measure M funds alone, it would not fund the, it might not fund the um, swim center and recreation center. Although uh, we do understand that another swim center, especially in the Southwest is, is needed. We, we hear that um, quite often. So discussions are happening. Um, the, the cost of the project is pretty high. I hear you about a moderately sized um, uh, space rather than something grand. And we'll take that into consideration for sure. Uh, but it is something if we wanted to do that, we certainly could with Measure M as well as repairing the gazebo. I agree with you. The gazebo is on the list to get um, upgraded slash replaced. Um, it gets worse and worse. It's lean. I think it's le showed it leaning a little bit. Uh, one of the posts um, in the in the picture we had. Um, and you are right. We do have lots of volleyball and basketball in the in the park and the parking lot, the addition parking lot. So that gravel area is actually where the, the swim area and the recreation center are um, being thought of. <laughs> uh, nothing official has been um, discussed at all, but that's, I ever since I started working here, that's been a conversation uh, that we've been having here is that that's where that would be located. It seems like a very tight space to me, uh, but that's my understanding of where the thought is that it would go. Um, it certainly doesn't have to go at Southwest, but um, that's the conversation that's been had this far. Um, so hopefully, and I do appreciate that you've joined uh, Bear Farm working with Omar and uh, Jonathan out there. It's, it's a great, it's a great space and they do amazing work and um, thank you for your comment. And so I'll turn it back to our host, um, to look for our next uh, question. Thank you. Our next speaker is Larry Hansen, followed by Thea Hensel. Larry, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Yeah, I'm uh, Larry Hansen. Um, uh, I don't live in Santa Rosa, but uh, um, I live in Forestville. And, but uh, I've got the distinction of uh, being a teacher in, uh, in that Roseland uh, area for 31 years and uh, took uh, many, many children. I think I've I had over a thousand students, maybe 1,100 students over the years. And I would take them to environmental uh, areas because I wanted them to uh, be able to um, experience that. And so uh, today I'm proposing or uh, supporting uh, natural parks. Uh, we need those. It's very, very important for children to be exposed to natural areas. And so there's one uh, natural area in Southwest uh, Santa Rosa, the, uh, um, uh, the neighborhood. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, and previously on your presentation, which I appreciate very much, you were showing uh, new parks uh, that were 
uh, proposed, and I see that there's some other new parks within the area. And so I'm glad to see that. Uh, you know, we support all kinds of parks. Um, when I say we, uh, I'm actually representing Forest Unlimited, who has worked with the neighborhood uh, group and helped them uh, maintain trails there. We've actually planted trees in the area. Uh, and along Santa Rosa Creek. And, uh, but we, we support all these. I mean, I, I, play, uh, I play tennis and I played volleyball. I've done all that. So I really support sports, but we need natural areas and it's very, very important. And the other aspect of uh, supporting a natural area like that is that you will save lots of money because, because you will need to minimally develop that area. You will save lots of money Therefore, the previous speaker with uh, wanting to support a swimming, which I totally support also, uh, you'll have some extra money for supporting things like that. And uh, anyway, it's, it's, I think it's a win-win thing, supporting the natural area. So the school next to it, Roseland um, Creek School, can use it as an environmental area. Shepherd, the school I worked at for 31 years, can come over and uh, teachers can take their kids through the park. It's a win situation for them. It's a win situation with the county. You have to spend less money. You can spend that money on other things. So that's my comments. I hope that you take that into consideration and I appreciate your uh, presentation today. Um, and uh, I look forward to future ones. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Thea Hensel followed by Jim Bray. Thea, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Hi, my name is Thea Hensel. I'm co-chair of the Southeast Greenway campaign. And I was glad to hear that the previous speaker spoke about the neighborhood park. Um, a few years ago, Omar was part of a group who looked at the east and the west side of the south part of town and see really strong links between the two. We both look forward to a natural setting. I would love to see picnic tables and things where people can actually enjoy themselves. So it's sort of quasi rock recreational because picnics and spending time outdoors in, in a wooded area is uh, just as important as recreational facilities. The connectivity between East and West is critical. And of course the missing link in that part is the restoration of the Prince Memorial Greenway. And so we would like people to look at all three of these areas as a connective unit that can really bring the communities together in a much more efficient way that uh, feels a lot friendlier. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jim Bray, followed by Newfer. Jim, I'm enabling your speaking permissions Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Hi, my name is Jim and I've lived here in Roseland for 11 years. And um, my question is with regard to the uh, natural, what I call the wild park, um, that the, I believe the city is planning on turning into a park, but I'm wondering what the status is of that process. I, I've been attending meetings about that thing for about 10 years now, and I wonder where we stand today. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for having the opportunity to give input. Thank you, Jim, and I believe you're speaking of Roseland Creek Community Park, but certainly correct me if that's wrong. Uh, Roseland Creek Community Park um, went to council, I guess it's two years ago now, um, pre-COVID. Uh, for approval and they requested that we go back out and look at additional um, comments from the community. And in that time, we the city has formed into districts and Roseland Creek uh, Community Park falls into council member Alvarez's district. So he we are working with him and he is conducting a few listening sessions here and there. And uh, we'll be working with him to bring back the Roseland Creek Community Park um, topic uh, back to the Board of Community Services as well as Council hopefully so that we can get a master plan 
and move forward with it. And, and certainly if that doesn't give you enough information, we have some contact information uh, in the next couple of slides um, and you can reach out and we can have a, 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 a longer conversation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Newfer, followed by Jorge Innocencio. Newfer, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. You may okay. state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Uh, my name, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, my name is Melissa Newfer. I am a teacher at Roseland University Prep and we go to Roseland Creek Elementary School um, to learn about science before um, COVID. And I try to teach about climate change. And I'm also taking a master's in how to make change in the world and how we get kids involved in nature, uh, especially uh, the community in Roseland. And all of my research indicates that we need to spend more time in nature, like real nature, if we're gonna have people care about it. And so we need more opportunities for that to exist in town and Roseland Creek Community Park is an excellent location for that. So I would like to see it be as untouched and preserved and let's invest our money in restoration. And also let's get people to volunteer. Like I'd love to get my students to volunteer and let's, let's create a program there. Maybe even like education programs for the little kids that are right across the street. Um, we've already been organizing this stuff and then I'd like to continue to organize it. So I'll relinquish the rest of my time to say that. I'd also love to work with LandPass uh, just to throw that out there. So, and I do currently work with LandPass. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jorge Innocencio. Jorge, I am enabling your speaking permissions. Please be, uh, provide your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Jorge Innocencio. Um, thank you for hosting the meeting today. I just had a couple of quick comments and um, a few questions as well. Uh, the first one is I like to advocate to expand Hearn Park. Um, I live right by it. And if you drive there on the weekends, it is, um, it's always been full. Right now, it's still full, which is not great. But uh, even before COVID, it was always full. There's a homemade volleyball court there. Um, there's always basketball tournaments going on. And I think we really need to um, expand that volleyball court. I, it's a homemade one. And um, I think it'd be pretty simple, not simple, but uh, it'd be great if the city could um, embrace that and create a volleyball court, um, expand the basketball court, and just expand Southwest Park in general because it really is a community hub, um, especially on weekends. And uh, as a previous caller said, uh, the park, the parking lot there is at capacity almost every single weekend. So I think that's a great opportunity for Measure M. Um, I'd also like to advocate for to see if we could. Um, use some measure and money for the Colgan Creek Trail. I know it's been planned. Um, it goes right through a ton of neighborhoods, um, neighborhoods that I live in, and it'd be great if we could walk along that creek. Uh, it's a great opportunity there. Um, finally, I also like to advocate for um, a public swimming pool. I know that's not with Measure M, but I just needed to voice that because uh, my little brother takes swimming lessons at Finley, and I know it's kind of a pain for my parents and everyone to get them out there. Uh, finally, sorry, I have a lot to say here. Um, you know, the south, southern part of the city is growing tremendously, and I don't, I don't really know if you have a slide comparing how many acres of parks we have in southwest and uh, in the southwest quadrant. Um, I attended a previous meeting, and uh, the acres of parks here are small. I know we're working on it, but I think that needs to be a priority always, uh, because I want more nature parks. I want more parks. I think the bottom line is. Uh, we need more parks in, in South Santa Rosa. Um, and finally, I, sorry, I know in the beginning part of the meeting, we had a lot of uh, youth showing up and I like to encourage them to, you know, speak up. If you want a soccer field, if you want more programming for your siblings, now's the time to say it. And, you know, it's, it's great to hear from um, everybody here in the city. So again, thank you. I appreciate that, Jorge. And I just, I also want to say, that uh, we love to hear your ideas, whether or not um, you know funding can occur with Measure M or not. Because uh, I will say, even prior to uh, Measure M coming on, this is something that we internally at Reckon Parks have been wanting to do: is come out and get information about what the community would like to see within Reckon Parks. Um, so I appreciate hearing all the ideas. Um, 
even if, if Measure M funding alone might be pushing the envelope with, with that, um, we can certainly, we'd like to hear from you that it's important and, um, and we can continue looking at that even outside of Measure M. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate you asking our um, youth to speak up. Uh, it is, this is a really great opportunity for everyone to, um, to hear you and not just hear it from the city and not just see it as part of a data set that comes out later to, but to actually hear your voice. So certainly feel free if you would like to like to speak up and I'll turn it back to our host to see if there's uh, any additional questions or comments. Yes, our next speaker is Alma Diaz. Alma, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and ask your question or make your comment. Hello, my name is Alma Roman Diaz, and um, I'm a mom. I'm a mom in the Southwest neighborhood. I live near the Dutton Meadows. Um, I've been calling about the park that is proposed right there on the corner of uh, Bellevue and Dutton Meadows. And then with all the new housing that's coming in, I think it's really important that on, in this area that we have more parks. Um, as we all know, uh, the uh, Southwest uh, Park, it, it's it's full on weekends. It is completely packed, and you know I think more attention needs to be put there. Um, and I agree with what Jorge Inocencio said about having a swim park. I mean that would just be for a lot of our families that live on this side of town. Going to Finley is not an option uh, to get swimming lessons, and it's so valuable uh, for our kids to have that opportunity to to learn how to swim and to have a swimming center in our area. Um, those, are, those are my comments. And I'd like to see more of a timeline um, as to um, when, when, when do you think these parks can, can actually happen and they can become reality. Um, the other thing I was gonna ask is about the survey. Are you um, doing the survey? Are you gonna post the information as far as the different quadrants, because I noticed when when you asked the survey, it wasn't particularly about Southwest, but I wanted to answer my question, particularly about the Southwest community. And when they were asking, it was a very general question uh, for the surveys that you made, um, just about Santa Rosa in general. But I'd like the information to be kind of, um, I guess, dissected more into the different areas, the different quadrants in Santa Rosa. And that, that, those are my, all my comments. Thank, thank you, Alma. And I'll, I'll start with the last question you had first and let you know that uh, we did um, in that part of the survey where you um, told us where you live, um, that's how we'll be separating out the responses we're getting. So uh, it's been a request also of the Board of Community Services member that we present information this way as well. So it's really helpful when we're understanding where the information is coming from that we're collecting. So uh, you'll be able to see it uh, by quadrant and we'll probably break down the information uh, much further than even just um, by where we're collecting as well when we come back to the Board of Community Services. So thank you for that. And um, as far as a timeline of when we'll see stuff in relation to Measure M, it's a 10 year window, which is why we're, we're you know, really, um, pushing these meetings and pushing this information, we really wanna hear from you right away so that we can actually do something with it. Because uh, we only have eight years left, which seems like a long time, but in the scheme of doing projects, it can be really slow. So um, we, we hope that you'll see something in the next year or two physically from it. I mean, some of the things you're seeing right now with the dedicated funds for Measure M are the recovery of Coffee Park uh, we're wrapping up some of the other um, fire damaged parks as well. It's, it's taken its time, um, but we hope that you can see some physical implementations of these things um, sooner than later, but definitely within the next eight years, for sure, when it comes to Measure M. Um, and I, I hear everybody who's saying the Southwest Park is, is packed. I, I know when, as a staff member, when we're trying to go there, we're always trying to find times that we can go there so we can find parking for ourselves. <laughs> so I, I hear you. Um, it's a well-loved park, which is really exciting. Um, and I, I hear all the interest in, in, in the need for the Southwest as well as some of the commenters that 
It is, um, if you look at the back of that map that we had earlier, um, south, the southwest part of the city has been, or portions of it have been in the county longer. So the city is gearing up and uh, there are a lot of new parks planned. So it's, it's gonna be exciting times in the southwest for sure. Um, okay, so I, I know I can talk forever. So I'm gonna turn it back to our host to see if we have any more questions or comments. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sylvia Langan. Sylvia, I am enabling your speaking permissions in just one moment. Let me find you again. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Hello, my name is Sylvia Langan. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, I, I would like to um, make a comment um, with all the turmoil that is going on in um, our country right now. Um, mental health has become a, a problem. And I think having nature and having natural spaces for the youth and for all the citizens is very important. And I think um, that's why I would advocate for having um, some nature, natural parks in the Rosaland area, in Southwest area. And so that's my comment. Also, I um, work with uh, some students and with um, the biology teacher at school. We participate and we go to the Los Rosaland Creek Park and, and we do work there. Well, this year we, well, we are in distant learning, but uh, you, we usually work there. So uh, it is a great opportunity to learn about nature in a natural environment. Um, I think uh, you should preserve and you should take care of that environment. Thank you. Great, thank you, I appreciate that. And I'll look to our host. Do we have any more um, questions or answers? Um, I mean, questions or comments that uh, we can participate in and help answer? I see no other hands raised. There are a couple of Q and A in the um, Zoom Q and A feature that I wanted to ask out loud. Okay. Uh, one came up earlier in the presentation when we had the slide about how many parks there are in the Southwest Quadrant. And um, the uh, attendee was curious how that compares to other parks in the city, the other quadrants. Okay, um, let's see, I'm unmuted, okay. The, the amount of parks, I'm gonna to try to go back to it. So we have 13 parks in the Southwest quadrant where we own property. Um, and compared to the rest of the city, there is 108 parks. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty low amount, uh, which is one of the things we're saying is that um, Southwest, the Southwest area of Santa Rosa is the next area that will be, I think, as far as up and coming with parks and development. Uh, because a lot of the other parts of the city have been incorporated for a while or have been part of the city uh, for a while and have had development sooner um, than the southwest so i really um, i don't have a exact number per quadrant with me tonight um, but certainly we'll have we can have that information available for you if you reach out to us uh, but it is an area the southwest is an area where we definitely see um, a reduction compared to the other areas of the city and that's, um, again, that's due to how we collect fees. We collect fees when, um, when folks put in residential developments. And so when that happens, we collect more funds in the Southwest, which allows us to then go back out and do more parks and, and have more parks. There's another community park that's planned for Southwest Community Park out by the uh, former airport, airport site or airfield site. Um, there's no land, we don't own anything yet, but if you, um, can recall from our general plan map, there was a tree shown on the map. And that means that there's a larger community park that's even planned out there. So we anticipate um, some pretty uh, large amounts of growth in, in the Southwest as far as parks. And hopefully that gives you a, a basic sense, sense of it. And, and certainly we can give you finer details um, if you can reach out to us. And then um, I'll look back to uh, host Ander, was there another the other one uh, kind of re relates to that, and, and she actually asked it aloud, um, but okay. I, I'm not sure that 
what you answered respect in respect to measure M, and I think she was more curious about um, the, the little red trees on the map, the proposed parks in the southwest. Uh, like, is that park property purchased? How long will it take to develop any of those properties from um, after purchase acquisition? Right. So we we own uh, Roseland Creek Community Park. It's not developed yet. So that's that's a piece of uh, property that we own. The last part of the park was purchased uh, in 2018. Um, we also own property at the corner of Creek Park Street and Mojave Street, which is near the um, intersection of, of Hearn or of Bellevue and Dutton. Uh, but just it's really near the corner of Creek Park um, Lane and Mojave Streets. Just up for there, it's a it's two acres that we own. There's uh, plans to develop it further. It's been very difficult for us to purchase any additional land there from the landowners. Mm -hmm. um, so if we aren't successful with that, we plan to just go ahead and develop what we have, which is about two acres. We can um, fit a playground or something smaller there in that park. But we also own a sliver of land that isn't attached to any street or anything yet. <laughs> so as developers come in, that's how we're getting land. A lot of times they'll say, well, we're not going to pay in lieu fees. We're going to give you this piece of land. And um, a lot of times it takes several pieces of land to make an entire park. Um, so that's what we own right now that isn't developed that I'm aware of in the Southwest, if that helps answer that questions. And then the other trees, the other future, we do not have that land yet. So hopefully that helps give a little bit of perspective. There's um, certainly a lot that needs to happen in the Southwest in the future. And I'll turn it back to our host. Was there any other uh, questions or comments from the, from the chat or anybody else that has questions or comments? I have two additional speakers, maybe three now. Our, okay. first, our next speaker is Kimberly Burr. Kimberly, I've uh, enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Thank you. Yes, my name is Kimberly Burr. And um, for many years, we have been um, very uh, protective of the neighborhood. We've worked on, you know, restoring it, uh, cleaning it, and protecting it, and the, and the creek that runs through it. Um, so we're, um, committed to seeing that that area stays natural. It's a rare remnant of the Laguna wetlands areas. And I think it's uh, important to sort of uh, set that one into a new category or a separate category of park that is natural. So I appreciate if you guys would seriously consider that and not put asphalt and um, skateboard parks through there if possible. Um, we know that those are popular and we think that there are better places for those. And um, we would really encourage that developers be required to set aside larger acreages, not pocket parks. That just seems like an insult and does not uh, help communities, does not help the residents. And I think it's an unfair um, impact on the locals. So I think the city needs to, you know, increase what they require of developers in lieu of other uh, impacts that they are going to be um, uh, causing, I guess. And so I think that um, we would recommend that this area be preserved as a natural area for people in the area and for kids. And thank you very much for considering that as part of an overall um, conservation measure that benefits the community and the natural environment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Our next speaker is Larry Hansen. Larry, I've enabled your speaking permissions. You may move forward with your question or comment. Yeah, hi. I actually, uh, <laughs> I was uh, uh, allowing some, some time here because uh, uh, Kimberly is with me and she wanted to talk and didn't have you set up. So uh, it was just a kind of a placeholder. 
uh, again, I appreciate your presentation. We're watching it and uh, um, we're looking forward to your further discussion on these items. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Claudia followed by Alma. Claudia, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please feel free to offer your comment or question. Thank you. Um, I was just wanting to check in about the bus service and it's not in the mention of measure M funds, but has there ever been discussion about a loop for Finley, Southwest, Haworth Park, and maybe one of the other bigger parks so that youth can ride for free and get around town without having all the other bus stops in between? Not just for youth, I'm sure lots of people would use it. That's all. Thank, thanks, Claudia, and I will certainly share your comment received tonight with our transportation uh, folks who, who run the bus system. I, I have not heard that comment before uh, from a parks meeting and I, I think it might be um, something we would want to ask the citizens oversight committee with if funds could be used for, for, bus, for buses like that. I, I'm not sure. Um, I think we could probably use funds for that if it was specific to taking youth to a um, uh, to a program, and we have a uh, we use the uh, a trolley system. It looks like a trolley. You might have seen it around town. The recreation team mm -hmm. uses that to transport um, participants in the programming that they have when they're doing um, excursions or things like that. So um, certainly, I will bring this up to our transportation group and, and we have it here as a comment. So I appreciate that. Our next speaker is Alma Diaz. Alma, I've enabled your speaking permissions. You may go ahead and ask your question or provide your comment. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Um, I just uh, listened to you say that you might scratch the Mojave Park and I beg you not to. We do have a lot of new houses that are going on that are getting built on Dutton Meadows and that is in very close close proximity to that park to where that future park would be. Um, I've been telling all my neighbors as a proposed park because I do live right down the street from that proposed park and let me tell you we need the park. We've got um, an apartment complex, uh, uh, Burbank housing apart property apartment complex. We've got some uh, I believe it's sweat equity projects going on. Um, we've got more houses that are being built on this road. So I beg you, do not scratch that park. It is greatly needed in this area, greatly needed. And with that, I yield my time. Oh, oh thank you, Alma. And hopefully this will make you happy. We, I'm, I'm sorry if you heard scratch, we are not scratching that park at all. It is definitely um, there and it's gonna be a, a, a park forever. Uh, we just haven't been able to develop it yet. So. Uh, we want to expand it and 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 provide additional space for that um, for that park. So it's there. It's going to be there. Uh, we're looking to um, do some something with it in the coming years. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> are there? Um, I'll look to our host then. Are there any additional uh, questions or comments from anybody yet? I see no other hands raised. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing any hands. There's no more in the uh, Zoom toolbar. OK, great. So hopefully we got to all of your uh, questions. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the next slide then. I think it's our last slide. Um, for those of you that have hung on till the end, thank you so much. I know this is um, everyone's very, very busy. and. Um, it's tough to attend these and I really appreciate your time to be here with us tonight and participate. It's, it's so important. And um, certainly if there's anybody you know out there that still needs to participate or would like to participate, uh, we do have our information at srcity.org, Parks for All. I know I keep saying that, but it's so important. It's, it's a fantastic um, tool for the community to use. It's got all the video presentations and the um, survey is there as, as well. And um, 
hopefully we'll collect quite a bit of information. And then if you have additional questions or um, anything else, we also have an email address, eander at srcity.org. And our phone number, area code 707-543-3774. And so that's going to go to Emily Ander, our park planner assistant, who is one of our hosts tonight. Um, she's really working hard on this project and um, there's so much that's required to go on behind the scenes. She's helping doing that um, for us tonight, but she's also gonna be collecting all this, all this data that um, from the website as well as tonight. So I just wanted to let you know, thank you. And the conversation um, is not gonna end here, but keep us, keep us in mind. And if you have anything else to add, um, certainly reach out. And I'll look back to our host, uh, Omar, not to put you on the spot, but if you have anything else you wanted to say to the group, um, let us know. Yeah, no, I just, uh, you know, again, thank you. Thank you for taking your time. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, uh, we all have a, a lot on our minds, uh, you know, um, staying safe is one of them. Uh, you know, right now I got kids to pick up, but this is important, you know, and I really want to thank you all for, for taking the time again uh, to actually come out. I, I have, a, you know, <clears throat> where I go on to some of the other things I wanted to pick up is, you know, uh, everybody here, you know, if, uh, I, I, this, is some, this is an ask from me. Go out and ask somebody, somebody else, somebody that you know that might have not been in here. Uh, this is the best way to actually get get this information across. Like as we saw in the survey, word of mouth uh, is is huge. And so, maybe take the time and go out and uh, and look for look for somebody that has that did not participate. Maybe help them out. And uh, you know, my information should should be on here. Um, and uh, you can also re you know reach reach out to me if folks if you have a, uh, if you have any suggestions on how we can get the word out more uh, as well. And so, I just want to thank the you know again the, all of you, the panelists. Um, you know, obviously, the, you know, the interpreters as well for actually for their work. Uh, it's huge. This is huge for us. We try to uh, do our best in order to get the word out. And also while folks are here that they understand kind of th that that their voice is important, you know, that their suggestions are important and that, you know, how we can follow follow up with this. Um, also, I just, you know, again, uh, a plug for, uh, you know, continue the continuation of the, the, the survey will continue to be on, uh, you know, live until April 8th. Um, you can you can always go to um, uh, looking looking for the actual. Did I move the the email? Um, oh, it's uh, srcity.org parks for all. Yeah, so um, you know it, it's 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 going to be live, and so please just get the word out. Help us get the word out, um, and uh, yeah, and I think during this time, uh, you know, COVID. Um, you know, the hard times that we're doing, you know, I think just the pandemic overall has almost forced us to reach out to nature and see uh, and see what, you know, um, and, and help us out in some way. I, I, I've i been struggling to stay neutral, you know, kind of just uh, show my neutrality. But I, as your comments are coming in, I live in the area. You know, uh, I, I hear your, I hear what you're all saying. Sometimes I agree. And, and, and there's, there's, there's some motivation there as well uh, to, to hear this is one of the other reasons why LAMP has gotten involved with Bayer is that that you know all the needs that that have been uh, echoed here I think uh, you know were 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 thought of uh, a, a long time ago. Uh, I worked with a lot of you. I've seen you all out there, and it's and thank you for you know again coming out here and and, and voicing this. Um, you know I hear folks want to volunteer, uh, make us work. You know uh, reach out to us. Uh, you know uh, the. Right now, we have summer programs. We have spring break programs for children, for youth. I hope youth are still hearing me on this. If you want to pass out that information, please get a hold of us. If there are, um, is, if there is more need and we can't accommodate, that's that's a good problem to have. And so we can, I can try to advocate for that uh, and work with uh, different partners to actually make that possible. I think Bay, I've always said Bayer. Bayer. Uh, hopefully, if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, get connected with it with land paths. Because Bayer is is part of a network of now almost 2,000 acres throughout the county. Uh, I don't like to see it as a six acres. Uh, there's a there's a sibling uh, park in Moreland, and so I I, I really want to you know if you if folks are are looking for that uh, open space that you know that that natural environment, please let us know. Please let us know of ideas. That's how our programming starts with ideas from the public. Uh, that's how I like to believe <laughs> you know that that is how and and just push us on that. Um, 
So thank you all again. Have a great night. Uh, you know, to everybody that's been that's holding on. Uh, again, just suggestions, and then help us. Uh, you know, push this information through. Uh, if you don't see this information go through, I mean, there's always you know things that we can you know that ourselves we can help out with, uh, and and uh, and still you know uh, there is an avenue to actually not just through this right now this space, but you know hopefully there's there's ways that we can actually um, you know. Um, echo this in the in the city hall chamber some someday when we can actually meet, and then uh, I'll invite you that when once we're able to meet that we can actually meet out there somewhere and you know break some tortilla and bread or, or you know uh, at some point. Thank you very much and uh, have a have a great.